in an urban location, every square inch of the garden is important. And that's why I brought you here to one of Boston's most historic neighborhoods, Beacon Hill. It's absolutely beautiful. Here, they've turned urban gardening into an art form. This is one of the smallest gardens I've ever been in. The only way you can get into it is from inside the house itself. 17 years ago, this was a laundry room, and the owners took and demolished it and built this garden, and what an addition it is. Mm, it's beautiful. Now, it's a very small garden station. You can see that every square inch is packed with something. Look, you even have a specimen fern. And if you look here, Angela, look at the light that's down here. This is going to give the room a whole nother presence at night and make it dance with light and make it absolutely a beautiful garden at a time when most gardens don't look like much. A lot of structure in here. You see the fence right there going on with the ivy on it. A couple of statues underneath. And look at this window. Mm -hmm. It's actually a mirror. In reflecting back, it makes the room look so much bigger than it is. And in front of it, we have a nice window box. Now you can see here where they put in a fence and see it looks like there's another room on the other oh, side. Yeah. Of it. That's another mirror there. Oh, that's totally cool. And they created these wood structures hanging on the fence and filled them with plants. So that's going to turn into a living wall. Oh, very neat. Now you look at the size of the wall we have here. This is pretty amazing to deal with. And they've started by growing some vines up there, climbing hydrangea. Roger, I have the brick wall at the back of my yard. Do you think it would be a good idea to plant vines on that wall? There's two theories. Some people worry about damage being done to yep. the mortar. Other people say it's not going to happen for 40 to 50 years, and that's when it would have to be repointed anyway. Okay. And one more element I wanted you to see. Look at this set of stairs leading up to this little sitting area up there. Isn't that perfect? Very lovely. I can just imagine having breakfast up there. Maybe we can create a sitting area like that at your house. That'd be wonderful. Well, let's take a look at the next one. Angela, another garden that's only accessible from the house. You come out into this garden, and it's not huge. It's probably 17 by 19 feet. Nice size, though. Yep. And it has some challenges. Look here. They've grown this ivy, this English ivy, all the way up to help hide the neighbor next door. Over here in the corner, little strawberry growing and peeking out. Isn't that pretty? Roger, I thought it was difficult to grow fruits and vegetables in the city. It's not difficult, but we worry about the soil and what's in it. That's why in the city we use containers like this. We fill it with a great medium and then we can grow anything we want. Like there's lettuce. You look, there's a tomato going all the way up through the tree, all the way up and it's stretching up to the second floor looking for sunlight. Another thing that's pretty neat is over next to the barbecue, see all the herbs tucked in there? Just reach up, pinch something. It's very right handy, there. yep. We had a lot of people who say you can't grow a tree in a small space. But when you take a tree like this pear tree and you do a process of pruning called espaliating, it'll work out great. And espaliating is when we flatten the tree. They will take and attach it to that fence and it'll fill the whole space in. Espaliating trees is going back to the 1600s, so it's a well-known process. It's very lovely and very unique. And I can't help but notice another mirror similar to the one we saw in the last garden we visited. And doing the same thing in the garden, reflecting the garden so it just makes everything look bigger. But the primary purpose of this garden was to be a moon garden. So what's a moon garden? A moon garden is a garden that shows off its flowers at night. Oh. And that's primarily done with white flowers. They will absolutely pop in the moonlight. The other thing is that pinks and reds will recede. You won't see them at all. Makes sense. And a beautiful table and chairs. Certainly makes for a lovely outdoor dining room. This is a beautiful garden, but let me take you to something that's a little bit different. Angela, I'm showing you this last garden just for fun. This garden and terrace is owned by eight condo residents. It was designed by an architect to look like an old Roman garden. But what it truly is, is a shade garden. And they have all sorts of different types of shade perennials in here, which will really fill in. And these would do the same thing for your house. I noticed the hosta. I certainly have a lot of ground to cover. Well, hosta is a great choice because it comes in a lot of different textures and leaf color. It's a good choice. Here's another choice I like, and this is Euchara. It has a red color to the leaves and a red stem, and another one that's going to spread and take up a lot of the area. This is an interesting plant here. This is called Brunera. You can see how it looks like it was hit or frosted. Yeah, it gives pretty. a great texture, a different color to the garden. And an old standby here, a stilby. 
comes in different colors, but it's just a magnificent flower on it. And another plant that's going to get bigger, bigger every year, cover the ground. Here's something you don't see every day in the city. This is a birch tree, not common to the city at all. But look at the magnificence of that white of the stem against the red of the brick. It really jumps out at it. Stands you. out, yep. And here's a stewardia, the same tree you have at your yard. Now, what we want it to do is grow up, hide the fence. In your case, it'll grow up and fill in that space. Now, I, I assume you've heard a little bit of noise from the water running, Just right? a little bit. Take a look at this. What is greater than having your own pool and water feature in your backyard? It is fabulous, but I have to say, I don't think I'll be installing a Roman pool in my yard anytime soon. Well, at least you got some good ideas for some plants. I've got some wonderful ideas. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.